Church, would you give a great welcome today to our brother as Journey Kids are dismissed tonight. Thank you, Brother Joe. I appreciate that. And hello to everybody. It's good to be in Missouri, from Pennsylvania, and Florida. I live in Florida now. A little warmer there than it was here the other day. And it's a joy to be here with you. As Joe said, uh, Pastor Joe said, I have uh, been married 49 years to my lovely bride, who is very gracious to put up with me for 49 years. And uh, three sons, three daughter-in-laws, and our newly adopted little, uh, she's 14 months now, my kids adopted her at six months. They're having challenges, uh, having, ba having a child. And uh, my daughter-in-law was just so uh, worn out with the arduous process of adoption. She just said, Jesus, can't you give me a baby? Please, can't you drop one in my lap? Please, Jesus. And uh, true story, I'm before the Lord telling you this true story. Three days later, I got a phone call. A friend of ours, uh, my controller, who's been, my CFO's been with me 35 years, his son has four kids, and they got a call from a young a family that they knew. The, the 16 year old girl was living with her grandparents, got pregnant, had the baby. And they said, uh, would you like to take the baby? My 16-year-old granddaughter can't do it. She's living with us. We're older. And they said, no, but we know somebody that's looking. And so they called Jessica and Jordan. And they said, would you like to have the baby? And my daughter-in-law was just blown away because she said, Jesus, can't you just drop a baby in my lap? And uh, so they met the mother and the baby and Gianna, we kept the birth mother's name that she gave the baby. Gianna became our granddaughter uh, about eight months ago now. And uh, they live in Florida, right near us. We, and so that's why we moved to Florida. We could be near our youngest kids. My oldest boy lives in Wyoming and the other one lives in Philly still. Uh, but that was just such a special thing. So three sons, three daughter-in-laws and four grandchildren, little G baby Gianna. Uh, as a businessman, um, God has always had me around pastors, helping pastors, getting people, mobilizing the church to pray for pastors. You see, people beat up pastors. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. It's idiotic. You're fighting against the man and woman that God called to, to be in the church. And um, I'm not a pastor. Uh, but I'm a Christian, and <laughs> he's my pastor. So, of course, I want to help him. I want to pray for him. I want to, you know, if I can help him financially or get him some tickets to a thing or take him and his wife, send him on vacation, whatever, I want to bless and pray for my pastor, right? I mean, why wouldn't I? I was in the lobby of our church in Philly, and this guy came up to me and, and said, you know, Pastor Bob, I said, whoa, wait a second. I said, how many hours have you prayed for Bob this week? Well, you know, I, I, I said, shut up, man. I didn't ask you that. I said, how many hours have you prayed for Bob this week? Well, no. I said, so then what's wrong with this picture? You're willing to talk to me about Bob, but you're not willing to talk to God for Bob. I said, how stupid is that? I said, well, you need to shut up and pray. He said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. I need to shut up and pray. My pastor in Philly is all-American basketball player, six foot eight. He's got a hand as big as a meat hook. If he hits you, he'd break your jaw in a second. And big, tough kid from South Philly. And one morning, halfway into the service, he walked out of the pulpit. And the associate pastor had to finish the message. The burdens of the ministry, the turmoil, the emotional stuff, the spiritual fight that Satan is trying to get him and his family, and all the stress of building a new church. We went into a building campaign and built it big facility and all the stuff on him you know he just walked out he just he had an emotional breakdown associate pastor went in and finished the message and that afternoon I called four guys that I could trust and I said guys we're gonna have a, a, a we're gonna have an hour of prayer every day for Bob until God heals him it's just that simple we're gonna go out in prayer and we're gonna cover him in prayer we're gonna lift up the shield of faith over him and we're gonna go get before God Almighty and empty ourselves before God and believe God to restore him in body, mind, and spirit. We're going to cover him in prayer. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare aren't natural, man-made, or carnal, but they are divine weapons for the pulling down of demonic strongholds. And with these weapons, we can bring what? 
every negative thought captive to the obedience of the cross. Today's message is quit your stinking thinking. Learn how to submit to the Holy Spirit so that your mind will be under the control of the Holy Spirit. So we went out in intercession before God for Bob every day for at least one hour a day, four of us, crying out to God for him. Bob's back in the pulpit. The church is on fire. He, he's, he's healed. He's vibrant. He's, he's, God's restored him. Amen. Amen, brother. Thank you. God has restored him. He's in, and and it, it's such a beautiful thing to see. The activity of prayer, the power of prayer, the, um, the practicalness of prayer, the investment of prayer to produce a result. Therefore, when you pray with things soever you desire, if you believe you receive it now, you will have it then. It's probably not going to come the way you expected. I can guarantee you that. And it's, it's probably not going to come on your timing, but I promise you it's going to come. Jesus Christ is not a freak. Jesus Christ is not a liar. Jesus Christ told us to go into your secret place and close the door. And when you close the door... Your heavenly Father who's there with you will see you in secret. So have a secret place. Praise God for me. I learned many, many years. I'm going to be 71 this year. And when I was 18, I was an alcoholic on drugs, jail the whole nine yards. And God delivered me and set me free because I had a mother that wouldn't give up on me. So for me, the practicalness of prayer produced the man that I am today. I'm a zero without Jesus Christ. I'm going to say it again. I'm a zero without Jesus Christ. I have many NFL players, friends of mine that are, you know, Hall of Famers and whatnot. And it's a beautiful thing for me and everybody else to see when they're up on stage and they get the microphone. And the first thing they say when they grab it is, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for what he's done for me. What a blessing to see a man or a woman give God that kind of credit. So, prayer. Um, Romans 8, verses 5 through 7. I want to read that to you. because That's where I want to start today. It's, it's really an incredible verse. If you'd go to it, please. Romans 8, 5 through 7. It says, Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what the natural desires are. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of the sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind of the sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile towards God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. But the spiritually minded person has life and peace. Wow. See, I've been walking with God for 52 years now. And I see a lot of my brothers and sisters in Christ not walking in life and peace. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, I'm convinced that every demon in hell was around that cross, cheering and saying, yeah, we got him. This is our end. This is our end zone. We defeated him. That Christ is over. It's done. You see, Satan wants to control your mind. Your enemy, the devil, goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Learning how to exercise your mind on the things of God is what? Life and peace. The moment you're not sensing life and peace, I can assure you it's Satan bothering you. I can assure you if you're not living in life and peace, if you're one to walk around and always with this doom and gloom stuff, and I'm not talking about a name and claim it theology. Forget that nonsense. It's a bunch of nonsense. I'm talking about you accepting the fact that the Spirit of God lives within you. The Holy Spirit should be in control of your thoughts. 
And the moment you're thinking bad thoughts, I think bad thoughts a lot. I know they're not from God. I'm a man. I'm a sinful man. I have a carnal nature. But the moment those thoughts come to me, I have a choice. I can let them nest in my mind, or I can let them be like a bird and fly over and rebuke them in the name of Jesus Christ. Spiritual warfare. The weapons of our warfare are not natural, man-made, or carnal, but they are divine weapons for what? The pulling down of demonic strongholds. And with these weapons, we can bring every negative thought captive to the obedience of the cross. My wife has a tendency not to think of herself the way that I think of her. My wife has a tendency not to think of herself the way Jesus thinks of her. And I'll bet there's a lot of you here today that like to beat up yourself. I'll bet there's a lot of you here today that don't want to accept the fact that you are born again, that Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Those words that we sang, they're just not words. When you speak against the spiritual forces that come against you, you're exercising your God-given gift of relying upon the power of the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. You see, God invested in you. When God invests in you, He wants a return. The most dangerous prayer you'll ever pray as a Christian is, Father, please use me today to make faith come alive in somebody's heart somewhere. Please, God, allow the Holy Spirit to flow out of me today into the life of somebody else. I want to be productive for God. I am not a pastor. I'm not called to pastor a church. That's not my gifting. My gifting is I'm a businessman, but I'm a first a Christian. And so that means that wherever boardroom I walk into, whatever bank meeting I have, whatever customer I go to see, my number one responsibility is to represent Jesus Christ. Yes, I'm not going to go into my uh, a prospect's office with my Bible under my hand and Jesus loves you, this I know. I'm not going to do that and sit down and start singing. I'm not going to be stupid. That's not what God wants me to do. But if I'm an athlete, I want to be the best athlete I can be. If I'm a businessman, I want to be the best that I can be. If I'm a mother, I want to be the best mom and housewife and pastor and whatever it is that you're called to do. Nathan's a coach, and I know that his number one goal every day is to represent Jesus Christ. Nathan wants everybody to see that if you want to be successful on the football field, you've got to go in that gym and you better work out. You better stretch. You better eat right. You better get your mind right. But he also knows that if you want to be the person you're going to be, there's a God that's just waiting to infuse you. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes, FCA, goes to great lengths to teach athletes that. The Christian sitting in the church pew. I want you to hear today. Stop your stinking thinking about yourself. Don't let Satan push you around anymore. Accept the fact that you are a redeemed child of the Most High God. Okay, you're not where you want to be. I'm not where I want to be. When Satan harasses me, or, or I'm an author, I've written some books, and I, you know, once in a while, Max, if you're stupid, nobody reads those books. They're stupid. They're foolish. And, well, yeah, I'm just going to write writing a new one right now. And so my wife says, I hate it when you write these books because all hell comes at us. <laughs> she says, all hell comes at us. And it's just true. When you set your face to the kingdom of God, you better get ready for warfare. But we don't think about that enough. We don't understand what the Bible says. I want to give you a couple of scriptures because today, my goal today is so that you will leave here and that the next time Satan throws these negative thoughts at you, my goal today is that you're going to go, oh, that was a good one, Satan. Whoo-wee! That was a good one. I say that to him all the time. I was telling Pastor Joe the other day, I'm writing this new book and Satan's beating me up about certain things. I said, man, man, that was a good one, devil. I never heard that one before. <laughs> now, I've been walking with God 52 years, so I, I, I've had a little experience at this, okay? But I want you to understand that Satan has a plan for your life. He wants, to th he wants you to think that you're a scumbag, that you're never going to amount to anything. You're a loser. You ain't got nothing to offer nobody. 
Look at you, you stupid fool. You barely got out of high school. My last year in high school was wood shop, metal shop, crafts, and English. I was stupid. Not because I didn't have the intellect, but because I never applied myself, and I came from a life of drugs and alcohol. So Satan just piled on top of that, pile and pile. Of, You're never going to amount to nothing. I could have cared less. Because I didn't understand that his plan was to destroy me. His plan was to get me thinking wrong about myself. So every day I've learned to say that prayer, Father, please use me today to make faith come alive in somebody's heart somewhere. I was in Philadelphia uh, back at my home, and we had one morning we had 24, 26 inches of snow, and uh, I told my wife I'm going out for a drive. She's, I had a Jeep, so I wanted to go out and play around in the snow. And I'm backing out of my driveway. At the precise moment, I see this guy walking down the street, and it was a neighbor of mine. And I knew this guy had two PhDs, a PhD in aerophysics and a PhD in aerodynamics. And I barely got out of high school. <laughs> but I knew the Christ that created him. I knew the Christ that gave him that mind. I knew the Christ that created the universe that he was studying. He was one of the lead men on the Star Wars project. And I knew it. And so I'm backing out of my driveway. I said, I said, to, I said Bill, I said, where, where are you going? He said, I got to get to work, Jim. And I knew why. This was 1901 or so, it was right to the Cold War, and, and the, the, you know, the Star Wars project. I knew he was one of the lead guys on it. I knew why he had to get there. And I said, Bill, you know, I'll give you a ride. And before his butt hit the seat in my car, he looked at me and said, why do you send your kids to Christian school? <laughs> Good morning, Bill. <laughs> but I knew right away, because that morning I had spent my time with God. That morning I was before God, ministering to God, worshiping God, praising God. That morning I spent an hour before my Father in heaven, praising Him, magnifying His name, glorifying Him, thanking Him for allowing me to walk into His presence and to worship Him and to praise Him. I was worshiping Jesus and thanking Him for His death on the cross and, and, and His blood that washes my sins away and for Jesus wanting to be my best friend. Why He would want me as a friend, I don't know, but I was thanking Him and praising him for it. And I was thanking the Holy Spirit for moving in me and upon me and through me and giving me the wisdom and knowledge and understanding that I needed. I need the Holy Spirit in my life. And I was thanking him for that. And I closed my session with the three of them, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one and three, the Holy Trinity. Don't ask me how it works, but it's real. And I asked the three of them to use me today for your glory. Please, God, use me today. I'm backing out of the driveway at the precise moment. This guy's walking down. He gets into my car and before his butt hit the seat. Why do you send your kids to Christian school? I said, well, Bill, do you think my kids are going to hear the truth in, in, in the public school? He said, what are you talking about? Public schools, we're, we're a blue-rated blip. We're this and that. We're top of the school. I said, Bill, do you think my kids are going to hear the truth that Jesus Christ died on a cross for their sins? And that the blood he shed on that cross was for washing away of their sins. And if they were to ask Christ to forgive them, that God Almighty would cleanse them and forgive them solely because his son Jesus Christ gave his life and shed his blood on that tree. And it's because of that blood on that tree. Do you think they're going to hear that, Bill? And he's looking at me like, well, what about this? And what about the poor children? He went into this diatribe of all this normal stuff that intellectuals like to do. Okay, I'm an evangelist, so I, I share my faith almost every day of my life, so it's nothing for me to be confronted with the most uh, intelligent people in the universe, and it's typically they come up with all the same nonsense. So as he's going through his nonsense, I realized that there was nothing I was going to say in the natural that was going to bring down this spiritual force that was motivating. I knew that. You see, the Bible tells us that let me read a couple of these scriptures to you. 2 Corinthians 4, 3, Satan has blinded the mind, blinded the minds of those that do not believe. I knew his mind was blind. So how was I going to minister to him in the natural? It wasn't going to work. How about this scripture? Proverbs 16, 3 and 2. He that ruleth his mind is mightier than he that ruleth a city. 
How about this one? Let this mind be in you. Philippians 2.5. Let this mind be in you, that Christ Jesus rose from the dead. Ephesians 4.23. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. How do you be renewed in the spirit of your mind? How about Deuteronomy 6? I love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. You see, the mind, having the right mind, having the mind of Christ will permit you to think correctly. It will dispel all the stuff that comes against you to destroy you. The battle is for your mind. Yes, your spirit is involved in that, yes. For we are made up of body, mind, and spirit. But how does he get to your spirit if he doesn't attack your mind? So I realized that there was nothing more I could say to Bill because I was staring. And then I just said, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, you see, what's, you see how Satan has this man bound. God, you got to do something here today. And I said, Bill, stop. Bill, the greatest theological truth in all the world that will ever be known to mankind the greatest truth in all of the universe. He sat up on the edge of the seat as if to say to me, God, I hope what you're saying is about to be true, Maxim, because I'm looking for the truth. And I said, Bill, the greatest truth is this. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. And he began to weep like a baby. I mean, snot's coming out of his nose, and he's weeping and crying uncontrollably. And I knew that the Spirit of God had met him right there in my seat. I knew that God arranged that snowfall, if for anything else, just for him. I knew that, and I was so excited that another soul was coming into the kingdom, that Satan had to take his hands off of this man's mind. He had to have an encounter with the living Christ. My brothers and sisters, you have the privilege of sharing Jesus Christ every day with somebody. It doesn't have to be fancy. Well, Jim, I'm not an evangelist. I'm not a preacher. You don't have to be. Go be somebody's friend. Go make a friend with somebody. Tell them. Let them, let them know you're, how genuinely concerned you are about them as a person. With the sole purpose in mind is to bring them to the cross of Jesus Christ. I've had the privilege to bring hundreds of men and women to the cross of Christ in the business community, one-on-one, -on -one, simply because I know that I have nothing to offer anybody except Jesus Christ. I know that, but I know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I've learned that Satan is not going to push me around anymore. I've learned how to hear his voice. Whenever I hear those negative thoughts that come against me, those evil thoughts, those lustful thoughts in the heart and all that stuff. I hear them all day just like you do. The thoughts aren't bad. Don't beat yourself up about that unless you give way to them. Give no place to the devil. Your mind is the place where you can have the victory. And that's going to happen by you spending time in prayer. What prayer does, and a, a, one of the things prayer does, is prayer recalibrates your thinking. When we were singing those songs up there, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Wow, that's the truth. Not just nice words, but there ain't nothing in this world that's true. Nothing. Except that the blood of Jesus Christ has redeemed you, and you're going to live eternally with Almighty God. You're not junk. God paid his price for you. You are not junk. Don't ever think you're a second-class citizen because you're a born-again Christian, a child of the king, just because there's some idiots out there who want to laugh at you and make fun of you because you're a Christian. Pray for them. Pray that God's almighty spirit will fall upon them and break the yoke of bondage, that they will quit their stinking thinking. So as Bill's crying and weeping in the front of my car, I gave him some Kleenexes to clean himself up. It was a mess. I mean, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I mean, I've been in jail houses where I've seen guys do the same thing. I've been in uh, presidents' offices, and I mean, it just when the spirit of God falls on a man or a woman, there's no denying it. And God wants to flow through you every single day of your life, every day. 
if you just start looking for the opportunities and making yourself available, setting your mind on the things of God, allowing your mind to be renewed. What does the Bible say? Be renewed in the power of the Holy Spirit. Renew your minds, Paul said. So as Bill came down a little bit and everything and gave him the Kleenexes to get cleaned up, I had the privilege of leading him to Christ right in my car that day. I picked him up, took him to his work. I picked, said, I'll pick you up for lunch. He said, okay. I picked him up for lunch. He was a different man, a different countenance. A different countenance had fallen upon him because he met the risen Christ. He met the risen Christ. My brothers and sisters, be active in your faith. Let your faith flow through you. Simply say, Father, please use me today to make faith come alive in somebody's heart somewhere. Please, God. Please, Father. I was on a plane uh, one day, and I walked on. I travel a lot. I walked on a 727 jet, 737, whatever it was. And there was one guy on the plane. And I've traveled all over North America, all over the world. The one guy on the plane, big jet. I, I, I can't believe this. I said, man, because I prayed that prayer that morning. Father, please use me today to make faith come alive in somebody's heart. So, Sir, surely it's this guy on this plane. I couldn't believe it. So the plane took off. And I couldn't wait to get out of my seat, you know, seat belt. I was going to go back and, hey, man, we get the whole plane to ourselves, make some small talk, and just see what God's going to do, right? Joe, I was so excited. I couldn't, I couldn't wait to get out of my seat. And the stewardess came over, hey, can I get you some coffee? I said, no, thank you. I, would, would you like some orange juice? I said, no, I think I'm going to get annoyed. Yeah, hey, I got, I got a mission to go on here. Well, I, we got some, and the Holy Spirit went, tush, tush. it's not him, it's her. <gasps> I sat back down in my seat, and I said, I will have that coffee. I will have that orange juice. And I was so blown away that Almighty God would permit me to see his hand at work in somebody's life. So blown away. So she brought the coffee and the orange juice, and somebody, the other stewardess was taking care of this guy, and we had talking. And... and uh, I asked her, I said, uh, <clears throat> I said, I'll bet, I said, um, how did I start it with her? Oh, probably something like, oh, I bet you're thankful for your, for your job, but you're thankful for your job. In other words, who are you going to be thankful to, right? I bet you're thankful for your job. She said, well, yeah, it's a nice job. I said, well, tell me about your parents. She said, I got my mom and dad and my brothers. Oh, that's awesome. Come from a nice family. I said, I bet you've got a lot to be thankful for, don't you? She said, yeah, I really do. I said, boy, I bet God's been good to you, hasn't he? And she stopped. And I knew right then and there, I was so blown away that God would empty this jet just to get her back to the cross. And so I said, she said, I saw this little tear in her eye. I said, oh. I said, you've been running, haven't you? And then, then I saw another tear. I said, you got a mother back home praying for you, don't you? And then it started. Then the, the tears just, just started. I said, let me ask you a question. How many times have you been on a plane where there was only two other men? She said, never. She said, we couldn't believe what was going on here today. And she's weeping and weeping. I said, let me ask you a question. Can't you see how God rearranged, it was U.S. Air back then. Can't you see how God rearranged U.S. Air's flight history? to empty this jet just to get to you. And she started weeping like a baby, weeping. And I said, give me your hand, let's pray. I said, you want to come home to Jesus? Yeah, I want to come home to Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wow. I got hundreds of stories like that to tell you. Quit your stinking thinking. God wants to use all of us for his glory. Satan's job, the next worst thing to a damn soul. Are you ready for this? Holy Spirit, I want to say spoke to me, put these words in my mind one morning. The next worst thing to a damn soul. Pastor, are you ready for this? 
The next worst thing to a damned soul is a person that Satan has so neutralized that they become non-productive for the kingdom of God. Whoa. The next worst thing to a damned soul is a person that Satan has so neutralized that they become non-productive for the kingdom of God. Why not? If, if, if I know the guy wants to serve Christ, if he's not going to walk away from Jesus, I just got to make him non-productive. You, you're, oh, you can't win a soul for Christ. Look at you. You ain't a pastor. What do you got to offer anybody? Look at you. Have you ever done? Look at you. You ain't nothing. What about you? How many people have heard that? Let me see the hands, please. Yeah, almost everybody in here, of course. Why? Because the enemy of our soul wants to neutralize us for his kingdom. I want to be a powerhouse for God, but I can't be. I'm a zero. Now listen to me, please. I'm a zero without the Holy Spirit. But I know the tricks and the powers and the plan of Satan. And I know I have experienced the power and the joy of prayer. So, today, I know there are things that have come against your lives, strongholds that are in your life. I know there are things that, spiritual things, that Satan has placed there that need to be brought down. And we're going to pray against those strongholds this morning that Satan has built up in your life, whatever they may be. I know that there, there might be a physical healing that you're asking God to give to you today. We're going to pray for that physical healing. We're going to pray for that spiritual healing that you need in your spirit. And we're going to pray and we're going to bring down the negative demonic activity that's come against your life. We've set this time in the service that when I'm, when I'm done talking, Pastor Joe's going to get on the piano and start playing. And for those of you that have to leave, leave quietly. But for those of you that want to have prayer, prayer to get stronger in Christ, to be a better witness for Jesus, number one. Prayer that maybe there's a spiritual lie that you just can't get over in your head, that you're a loser, that you're a scumbag, you're never going to amount to anything, or that there's perhaps there's an addiction. Perhaps there's a stronghold, whether it's, I don't know, whatever. Watching too much TV, watching the wrong kind of TV, drinking, smoking dope, what, whatever. We're going to pray against spiritual strongholds. We're going to bring them down in the name of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God is going to break that bondage today, no matter what it is. If it's negative thinking, if you can't get over the fact that you think that you'll never amount to anything for God, or that you're not that person. If Satan can make you feel like you're a second-class citizen, he's got you. He's a liar and the father of lies. But don't, forget, don't be surprised that he came, he came to Jesus. If you're the son of God, cast yourself. If you're the son of God, come in. What do you mean, if? Jesus said, get away from me. How many hear lies from Satan throughout the week? How many hear negative stuff throughout the week? Of course, every hand in here. Why? Because that's just who he is. Now, I know that there are some of you that have gone on in Christ, and that's wonderful to see, that you've learned and you're discerning. I would ask you to stay and help us pray. For those of you that have learned the tricks of the enemy and can sense when he's around you, can smell him, can feel him, and you've learned to rebuke that stuff, great. But most of the body of Christ haven't. Why? Because most of the body of Christ isn't as productive as they could be. Why? Because they feel like they're second-class citizens. They feel like it's up to the pastor to do the job, or, or that guy or that girl. No, it's up to us. We have the privilege of sharing Christ. So, Pastor Joe, if you'd get on the piano, and for those of you, gonna, I'm going to pray. And while I'm praying, for those of you that want to get set free from anything, those of you that need a, a physical healing, financial healing, for those of you that are sick and tired of the devil pushing you around in a particular area, just can't seem to break through. And for those of you who want a, uh, a healing, don't let this day be wasted. I thank you for coming today. I see your faces. It's a blessing to see your love for Christ. I see that. I see your love for Jesus. It's beautiful. You're my brothers and you're my sisters. We're going to spend eternity together. 
But I don't want anybody leaving here today with, with any type of edge that Satan has on you. He's a liar and the father of lies. He's no good. Jesus Christ wants you to be set free in your thinking. To accept the fact that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That you are an heir of God and join heir together with Jesus Christ. That you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now. Right now. The Holy Spirit is real. He's my best friend. The Holy Spirit corrects my thinking. The Holy Spirit gives me wisdom and knowledge and understanding. I need the Holy Spirit. I can't serve God without the Holy Spirit. I want that fresh anointing. I want that fresh anointing that you're beginning to sense even now. I want that fresh anointing that you're sensing even now. Why do I know that you're sensing it? Because God says he inhabits the praises of his people. God's here. So as I begin to pray, I just want you to come down front. We're going to have a prayer team. And if you have to leave, I understand that. Leave quietly. But for those of you that have had this victory and can help us pray, stay. Stay and be used by God today. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this morning. Father, thank you for the truth of your word and thank you for your love for us, God. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I, I've done the best I could today, God. I tried to do the best to honor you, God. I, I know I'm no Billy Graham, God, but I tried to do the best I could, Lord. Father, I know you love my brothers and sisters so much. I know you want them to go on in Christ, Lord. I know that you want to set them free. I know that this is a day, Lord, that you will meet with them and forever change their life, God. Forever, Father. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray you touch them right now. I pray you touch them, Lord, and allow the power of the Holy Spirit to move upon them in this room today. Oh, God, do a great work, Lord. Do a great work, God, that no one will be the way they were when they came. That they will be changed, Lord, challenged, encouraged, strengthened. They will see your hand so mightily upon them, God. Father, please move in this room today. Just come forward. Let this time be between you and Almighty God. Just come forward and come to the front of the room here and let the Holy Spirit set you free completely and heal you physically and give you the desires of your heart. Let meet with God today. Don't be ashamed. Come and meet with God today. Let this day be the day that will go down in history in your life, in your mind. If you have a loved one that is running from God and you want to take a step of faith and come down to the altar, we'll pray for that loved one that's running from God that wants to tell Jesus to leave him alone or get out of my face, Jesus, I don't want you. You got a co-worker, someone you'd like to share with but you haven't had the faith or the courage to share with? And you need God to give you that faith to share Jesus with them, next door neighbor, co-worker, friend, relative, whomever. Become that person that you really want to be in your heart. I know that you do. God knows that you do. Just come forward. And let's spend this time before God in prayer. Let's stand together. I'm calling on the God of Jacob. Whose love endures through generations. That's right. Come forward. That's right. Just come. Everybody come. Open up your hearts and let the Spirit of God touch. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, thank you. Thank you, God, for your presence here today. Thank you, Lord, that you want to touch my brothers and sisters in such a profound manner. God, this day in time will never be forgotten in their spiritual life. Today will be that day, God, that you move the mountain for them, for their loved one, God. 
for their situation. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you, God, as we worship you. Just worship him. I thank you, God, for, and then tell him what you thank him for. I thank you, God, for this. I thank you, God, for this. Tell him, God, I thank you for. I thank you for this, God, whatever it is. I praise you, God, for. I praise you, God, for what? God, I praise you for this. Tell him, I praise you for this. And now say, God, I need you for this. God, I need you to do this. What is this that you need God to do? Do you have somebody been praying for for years and they're just so, so, they hate God. They could care less about your God. Come down now. God, I need you to save who? Put their name on the end of that. God, I need you to deliver who? Put their name on the end of that. God, I need you to set free who? Come forward. This is God's time in your life. Take this time and use it. Let God minister. Don't hold back. Finally, have the breakthrough that you want. Become that man or woman of God you want to be. There's nothing like the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God. Nothing. God's Spirit can do anything but fail. Thank you, God. Father, you see those, you see them, Lord. And I know there's others here that need to come. Put your pride aside. Put your pride aside and come and receive from Almighty God. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this time. God, I thank you for, tell them once again, I thank you for, say, God, I love you because what do you love God for? Why do you love Him? If you can't answer that, come down front. You're not saved. You haven't given your life to Jesus Christ. If you can't say, God, I love you because... Thank you, Jesus. Nathan, would you lay your hands on some of these folks, please? Thank you, Jesus. Father, I hold the shield of faith over my brothers and sisters here right now. And God, in the name of Jesus Christ, you sense every need they have. You see everything they're asking you for, God. God, you see it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God touch them right now. Set them free right now. Deliver them. Those that need delivered, set them free right now in the name of Jesus Christ. That the blood of Christ would break any stronghold right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, for those who are in intercession for others, you see their hearts cry, O oh God. Father, save that lost soul, that young man, that young woman that's running from you. God, intercept them today. Empty the plane in their life. Whatever you got to do, God. Do it today, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, let the presence of your Spirit break any chain right now. Break any chain. Deliver them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Bring physical healing, God. Physical healing. Those that might be sick for something, that need a miracle, God, need have cancer or sickness or something, God, in their body. Father, please. Lord, they're asking you, God, they took a step of faith out of that chair today to come and meet with you. God, give them the desires of their heart, please. Right now, Father, please, let healing take place, physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, financial, whatever the healing is that they need, God. Father, we are your people. We've come to bless you and praise you. I want you to say, I bless God because, whatever that because is. I bless you, God, because. I love you, God, because. I want you to say, I love you, Jesus, because. Whatever that because is. You see, if you don't have a because, if you can't say, I love you because you cleansed me and filled me with the Holy Spirit. I love you because you wrap your arms around me every day. I love you because you encourage me and strengthen me. I love you because you let me be your brother. I love you because you let me be your son.
I love you because, almighty God, you've done everything for me, God. You've given me eternal life. If you can't say that, you're not saved. Come forward right now. Right now, if you want to give your life to Christ, come and see me right now. I'm here. I'll wrap my arms around you. I'll pray for you. I'll love you. Come forward right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come forward. That's it, brother. Come on over here. Let me give you a hug, brother. What's your name? Sam. Sam. I love you, Sam. Jesus loves you, Sam. You love Jesus, Sam? Yes. All right. You want to, you want to surrender your soul to Jesus, Sam? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I come to you. I come to you. And I ask you, God. I ask you, God. To cleanse me and forgive me. To cleanse me and forgive me. To help me love you, God. To help me love you, God. Holy Spirit, come in me. Holy Spirit, come in me. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Sam, you are saved. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. No matter what Satan says to you, no matter what he's going to bombard you once you leave here, he's a liar and the father of lies. You are saved. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And every one of these brothers and sisters in Christ are going to pray for you today. Is that right, brothers and sisters? You're going to pray for Sam today? <laughs> Sam, Jesus loves you, brother. Jesus is your best friend, Sam. Jesus. Jesus, touch Sam right now. Jesus, would you please allow Sam to sense the presence of the Holy Spirit right now? Use him mightily for your glory. That's it, God. That's it, God. That's it, God. Set him free. Minister to him. Fill him with the Holy Spirit. You know, as God's filling Sam, you just stay right here in God's presence, Sam. As God's filling, extend your hand to Sam. Extend your hand to him and ask God your own way to to bless him abundantly today. Ask him, go pray out loud. God bless Sam. Bless him, Sam. Bless, take care of him. And let Sam be a representative of everybody in this room. Fill us, God, with your presence today. Let us appreciate you, Jesus. I want everybody here that has not appreciated Jesus. I want, if you have not appreciated your salvation, if you have not appreciated the Holy Spirit right now, in the quietness of your own way, say, Jesus, I'm sorry. I've kind of spit on my salvation. I've kind of pushed my salvation to the side. I've been ashamed of my salvation in front of my friends. I wanted my own way. I'm sorry, Jesus, that I've, I've been ashamed of my salvation. I'm sorry that I've been bitter towards you for something Maybe a woman turned their back on me, a guy turned their back on me, and I didn't get the job, or you haven't, whatever it is. Ask Jesus to forgive you right now for being bitter. Ask him to forgive you right now for being bitter. And ask him to fill you fresh with the Holy Spirit. See, you can't be saved without the Holy Spirit, so you already have the Holy Spirit. But if you want a fresh anointing, a fresh infilling, a fresh power from on high... Ask Him for that right now. Ask Him to fill you fresh with the Holy Spirit. But don't go into His presence with bitterness and unforgiveness. If you've been a sour Christian, if you've had a bad attitude, ask Him right now to cleanse you and forgive you. You see, this is a spiritual emergency room right here. This is the way the church is supposed to be. When they were in the upper room in one place, they're all with one accord. And God did miraculous things in that place. You see, none of us are righteous. No, not one. None of us have anything to offer anybody except what God gives us anyway. So who do you think you are? Because you've got a little money or you've got an intellect and educate. Throw that stuff away, man. Put that stuff at the cross and ask for forgiveness. And then use it for God's glory. I use my platform in business for God's glory. Because I want my father to look at me when I get to heaven and say, well done, Jimmy. You screwed up a couple times, but I forgave you. You sinned against me, Jimmy, but I forgave you. You asked me to cleanse you and forgive you. But Jimmy, I'm proud of you because you tried. You see, guys, 
that's all your dad wants to, from you is try. I want you to go to work this week. I want this week, this week of March, this month of March, you're going to be different when you leave here today. You're going to be different because the Spirit of God is upon you in a different way. You're going to sense God's anointing in a different way this week. And I know you're going to be afraid. I know Satan's going to say, don't tell them about Jesus. They're going to think you're a freak. Don't, don't let the cat out of the bag. You don't know how to share Christ. You ain't no Billy Graham. You ain't no preacher. Don't tell them about Jesus. Those are lies from hell. See, as of right now, all of you, as of right now, all of you, if you want it, can receive a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit to be used by God. Some of you will be used greater in prayer. Some of you won't be out there speaking to people. But some of you will be locking yourselves in a room more and praying more for souls who lost souls. That's one of the greatest things you'll ever do. Some of you need to quit your stinking thinking about yourself and don't let Satan beat you up any longer. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are an heir of God and join heir together with Jesus Christ. You have been bought and paid for with the blood of Jesus Christ. Not to accept that is agreeing with Satan that it's, it's of no value. But you are never going to be the same if you want that fresh anointing right now. So we're going to close in prayer. And I know it's a different service than what you're used to. I hope someday I see you again. I'm sure I will in heaven. But I want everybody to look at me right now. And I want you to receive, I want you to receive the blessing of God. I want you to receive it because you're God's child. God loves you. Father, I ask you right now in the holy name of Jesus that you would bless my brothers and sisters right now. Lord, with a fresh anointing of yourself, the Holy Spirit who is the third person of the Trinity. Father, would you please allow a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit to descend upon everybody in this room today. Please, God. I pray for the young kids, Lord, those who are in school. I ask God that you give them a courage, a courage from on high to tell others about Jesus. I ask you to give them great friends, Lord, real friends. Get rid of the friends that aren't, they shouldn't have. Give them great friends, Lord, please. And Father, for all the adults in the room, I ask that you help them at their jobs this week in a special way. I pray you give them the favor that they deserve, Lord, because of your kids. I'm asking, Lord, for a fresh anointing with wisdom and knowledge and understanding. I'm asking you to give them the raises that they deserve, God. Move on their bosses' hearts. Give them the positions, God, that they deserve. Elevate them, Lord. Let the, let the uh, promotions come through. For all the elderly people like me, God, we pray for all our grandchildren. God, take our grandchildren and our children. Use them for your glory. Father, stop the drinking and the drugs in their lives. Stop the, all the stuff, the, any strategy that hell has against them. Father, you said that the weapons of our warfare, that's your word, God. The divine weapons are for the pulling down of demonic strongholds. So God, as parents and grandparents, Father, we hold you at your word. This is your word, God. We just speak your word back to you, that we bring every negative thought captive to the obedience of the cross over our children. We bind any demonic activity against them. We rebuke any, any strategy Satan would have against our kids. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. We rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. God, break every chain that's against our kids. Destroy any strategy. Help our children love you, Jesus. Father, please bless your people. Please, God. And Father, I want all of us just to say thank you, God, for today. Father, thank you for today. Just say it out loud. Father, thank you for today. Say it again. Father, thank you for today. One more time. Father, thank you for today. Pastor Joe. Let's sing. Amazing. Come on, let's sing it together. How sweet What did it do for you? It saved a wretch like me. I 
once was lost, I once was lost, but now, was born, but now. Let's do the last verse. When we've been there, and we Everyone said together, amen and amen, amen.